Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Rambo Mania. It's May 22nd, 2015. And you know what that means. Today marks the 30th anniversary of Rambo First Blood Part 2. The action sequel that started it all. The One Man Army Movement. And on tonight's show, I'm going to give you a fan reading by myself of James Cameron's original vision of that sequel. Word by word, we're going to do it all. The whole entire script. A very different movie. And I must apologize for the delay. I wanted to do this a long time ago. Um, I, I wanted to do this actually with when we covered Rambo 2. We did so much in that time. David Morrell was on. We did uh, the history of the film front to back. Uh, we did a smaller, I apologize for the smaller review of the movie uh, in question. But uh, I didn't get around to doing this voiceover uh, reading of the James Cameron script, so we're going to do it tonight. Um, this is the first time I'm attempting to read an entire screenplay for a show. Um, and who knows? Maybe we'll do it again. You know, when we get to the ton of Rambo 5 scripts... I've got here in storage. So, just a note before we get started. Um, originally, Dolph Lundgren, himself Lundgren, was supposed to play Podofsky, played in the movie by the brilliant Victor Maitland himself from Beverly Hills Cop, Stephen Burkoff, uh, which is an, you know, which is great because we're doing Cobra tomorrow, so there's a, a great connection right there. Um, but he ended up as the unknown in Rocky IV instead. Um, and by Cobra tomorrow, I mean we're going to talk a little Beverly Hills Cop in there too. So, also I want to note that George Pappard of the A-Team was supposed to play Kirk Hill. Eventually that role went to Charles Napier. And I wonder if that's why they changed his name to Murdoch in the movie. Some fascinating stuff here. Um, as well, we get to meet another one of the four men who were considered good enough to complete this mission that Troutman was talking about in the Hard Time Prison intro of the sequel that came to be Rambo First Blood Part 2. Agent Brewer, who will be appearing in our Rambo prequel. Um... Agent Brewer, who was originally supposed to be played by the great one and only Mr. John Travolta, who at one time was optioned to play Rambo in uh, First Blood uh, 1982. So that's pretty awesome. Can you dig it? So I'm going to ask for your forgiveness in advance, as some of my reading may seem a bit awkward, because I haven't read this draft since we started Rambo Mania some 500 episodes ago. Um, and thanks for joining us down that long road, or this long road that, you know, and that's a milestone in itself. So a lot of great camera direction in this script, and it's not hard to imagine how awesome this would look as a James Cameron film. His signature is beautiful, and all his own, I must say. So if you can imagine, like, the lighting, and just how James Cameron handles a film, like say like True Lies or, or Terminator 2, um, you're going to be blown, you know, if you can imagine that with Stallone in there, you're going to be blown away. Uh, I want to thank Mr. James Cameron, yes I want to thank Mr. James Cameron for making this script available and free online and make no mistakes, you know, this is the sequel prototype, this is the prototype for Rambo 2, because as we all know, Rambo was supposed to die. So this is the prototype right here. And, um, but as Rambo creator uh, himself, Mr. David Morell, had told me last year when, when he was on the show that Rambo was viewed as a little too crazy to, to be filmed in this way, that he will be portrayed in the script that I'm about to read. So, um, here and there, I may throw in my two cents. But it's a four-hour script, and we don't want to be here all night. <laughs> so I'm going to try and gun through it for you in true Rambo fashion and spirit of today's events. 
um, in hopes that you don't get bored. Um, you know, so bear with me, please. It's all downhill from here. Uh, you can just sit back, kick up your feet, grab a snack and a soda, relax, and let me read to you. Or, um, if you wish, you can read along at www.jamescamerononline.com backslash Rambo2script. That's the number two. Um, so, jamescamerononline.com backslash Rambo2script.htm. Link is in the description down below. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Link is in the, in the description below for you guys so you can read along. Don't be shy. We're all friends here. And it might actually help you to stay in tow with me as I go along. Because it's easier that way to comprehend uh, what a lot of the characters are indeed saying. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin. I want to give, you know, I want to say thank you to Sly for, uh, you know, eventually making this movie. Because this movie changed the face of action as we know it. You know, all the people could say what they want. But this is the film that shaped action for every generation to come. So I want to thank you, Mr. Stallone. And I want to say to everybody, you know, thanks for watching Rambo Mania. And I hope everybody is having a great 30th anniversary of First Blood Part 2. Happy birthday to the First Blood sequel. Um, all right, let's get it on. So with that, let's begin. The uh, sequel that birthed the movement that gave us the name for this show, for Rambo Mania, made the world a better place. Uh, not my show, I'm talking about the phenomenon itself, Rambo Mania, made the world a better place. And um, one little tiny last note is uh, there is a mention of a bob here between uh, Troutman and a telephone. And uh, could this be... Bob Griggs, Mr. Robert Griggs from Rambo 3? I don't know. I'll let you uh, decide. You know, this time it's up to you to decide. Possibly, possibly R Robert Griggs is in here. There's a couple of nods also to a Rambo 3. Um, presumably a completely different Rambo 3 with a completely different villain that uh, I know and love, and that I know personally in life. A uh, couple of hints there. So, um, all right, I'm going to shut my mouth on that now. Let's, uh, let's get down to brass tacks. Please enjoy the sequel. Some mood music there. Mr. Jerry Goldsmith, the late great Jerry Goldsmith, and Mr. James Cameron, and Mr. Stallone. What a, you know, what a compilation together, you know what I mean? What a mix. So, First Blood Part 2, The Mission, by James Cameron. Draft Submittal. December 22nd, 1983. Fade in, title sequence, exterior, VA hospital, day. A drab green sedan with U.S. Army printed on the door stops at the steps of a fortress-like colonial-style building. Iron bars cover the windows. The lawn sprinklers snap mindlessly to themselves. A CRT-style printout appears at the bottom of frame. D minus 117 hours, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Angle on sedan. As the doors open, two powerful MPs, one of whom was driving, emerge. The other opens the rear door for Colonel Samuel Troutman, who stands, eyeing the imposing facade of the hospital. Troutman is 
It, Troutman is in his early 50s and wears the mantle of command sternly, but without arrogance. He takes the stairs with purposeful strides as the MPs fall, uh, falling in behind him. Hold on the sign above the main door as they go inside. Veterans Administration Hospital. Interior Hospital. A gray metal door bearing the sign Nero uh, the Psychiatric Wing bangs open and a massive orderly in white passes through. He is followed by two MPs, Troutman and a short doctor who hustles to keep up with the others. Low angle dolly proceeding. The entourage as they stride forward. The MPs are grim-faced and walk in step. Troutman and a doctor, Singletary, silently walk through the corridor. They pass the open day room where sonobalistic patients sit like statuary, watching the young and the restless or watching the wallpaper fade. Bleak light from an overcast day filters through the barred window. The vets seem older than their years, and although some show the physical scars of combat, there is no doubt that the greatest trauma for these men is behind the eyes. As they pass the open doors of the room of the chronic ward, haunted eyes uh, turn towards them. As they approach the nurse's station for the chronic ward, the orderly nods. The head nurse turns her to her console. Insert as nurse's hand, hits the bottom of the console, tight on security door, as a solenoid-operated op bolt snaps back with a loud buzz clack. The orderly's good hand shoves the door open. Interior, violent ward. The entourage enters a long, narrow corridor lined with locked doors. POV, dolling along corridor. POV shot. Occasionally, faces appear at the safety glass windows set in the doors. Men whose souls have fled, their eyes track us as we move past. And an an emancipated man in the United Hospital smock and bare feet stands as if lost in the center of the corridor. Reverse on group, dollying as they detour around the man whose claw-like hand snatches uh, catches at Troutman's tunic. A hoarse, demented shout shouting issues from one of the doors, a desperate wailing from another. Interior stairwell. Clo close on door latch as keys rattle and the door opens. Wider as the group enters a dark service stairwell, the single fluorescent light flickers stroboscopically in pulsing twilight. Lewis says, Shit, maintenance never gets down here. They descend two f flights to a corridor of steel bars on a sliding track. The MPs flank Lewis as he unlocks the door. Singletary says, So what am I supposed to do? Can't transfer him to Leavenworth. He's a civilian. So I put him in an isolation cell that hasn't been used since the Spanish Inquisition. Tight on barred door. Rolling aside on metal tracks, clang, interior corridor. This area of the hospital's basement has been used for little but storage in recent years. Stacks of obsolete equipment gathers dust, leaving only a narrow walk space. The steel doors of the isolation cell yells, yawns open, except for the last one. Troutman, Troutman says, maybe you should have tried cutting him some slack. Lewis opens a cabinet near the single locked cell and removes a small rifle. He feeds a syringe-like shell into the single shot bolt action. Troutman says, continuing, what's that? Singletary replies, tranquilizer syrette gun. Borrowed it from the animal control department. Troutman pushes the barrel aside with contemptuous snort and steps up to the cell door. Troutman says, Give me a break, nods towards the door, and opens it. 